worship. As we prepare ourselves to worship. We shall never let I stay here or come in here, degenerate and deteriorate into a posture of simply of being inside a building on a Sunday morning. There must be meaning, there must be purpose. And the purpose and the meaning must line up with God's divine standard and God's divine will. So then to worship we must prepare ourselves to worship. Worship just doesn't automatically take place because we sing a song, read a scripture. Worship takes place when the heart is lifted up into the presence of God. And so then as you bow your head, we, dear God, we come into your house this morning, praising your faithfulness. We come giving thanks for your mercy. We come this morning seeking your joy. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and for the Holy Spirit, whose presence here unites us as your people. Fill us this morning with your peace today. Begin a new thing in us today, new ways of thinking, new ways of living, new ways of responding to the good and the bad that comes into our this is what we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. As we stand all over the building, song says every praise to our God, every word of worship with one accord, every praise. Every praise is to our God. Amen. Let's just lift our voices this morning and sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah to our God. Because every praise, amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning as we go into the song.
sanctuary. We bless his holy name. Every praise, every praise is to our God. The psalmist say that everything that had breath, praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Uh, scripture reading, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, beginning with verse number 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with the excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man the thing that God had prepared for them that love him. Verse 10 says, But God had revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the thing of the Spirit of God, but they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who had known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, and the word of God is already blessed. Our deacons will come now and lead us to the throne of grace. Let us bow our heads. 
Father, we come to you at this time with thanksgiving and all. Father, we come just thanking you for this great day that you have prepared for us. We thank you, dearly, Father, for last night's rest and our early rising this morning. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be found in your house once again. Now, Master, as we come before you, we come, Lord, realizing we have sinned. We have come short of your glory. But we pray, dear we ask that you would forgive us, Lord, of our trespasses, even as we forgive those who have trespassed against us, and renewing us and restoring us a clean heart, whereas we may walk with thee once again. And now, Mass, as we look to the hills from which come our help, but we realize that all of our help comes from you. Master, we ask right now that you would bless the service. Oh Lord, that your Holy Spirit would rain down over us. That your Holy Spirit would break down barriers, Lord. That you would comfort us where we need comfort. That you would encourage us where we need encouragement. Oh, Father, we pray that you would bless everything in this service. Bless our musicians, our choir. Bless all of those who are in, the, in attendance. And Master, not forgetting about our pastor. We pray to you, Master, that you would bless us all. That you would continue to strengthen him and keep him in your way. Oh, Master, right now, it's in the name of Jesus, Lord. We're asking, Lord, that you would come closer. That you would help us with whatever is going on in our lives. Yes, oh, Master, we know that you can do anything but fail. Yes. We know that you have all power in your hand. Yes. Yes. Oh, Master, we just thank you right now. Thank you. For the opportunity to stand once again and sing praises to your name. And now, Master, as we come to the close of our prayer, we pray there with Master that you would that you would get all the praises and all the honor. For all honor belongs to you. We pray, Lord, that everything that we do would be acceptable in your sight. Well, Father, we pray, Lord, that you would just hear our prayer and comfort us. Encourage us this day. Now, Master, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. I say the name of Jesus, the one who died and paid for us all. It's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
coming from John, third chapter, verses one through seven, Romans, tenth chapter, verses eight through eleven, in our Baptist hymn book, page number five, eighty-two, John, third chapter, verses one through seven, Romans. 10th chapter, verses 8 through 11. When you find it, would you please stand? There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus answered, Very, very, I said unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. That if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. God had a blessing to the region here in the world. To respond to this right, uh, quick while it is fresh, I knew that some of the choir members you didn't understand exactly what was made. This is uh, Thursday, the, uh, March 29th, Thursday night. I will be preaching in the Bible services at uh, First Baptist Church of Paradise that's over in the uh, uh, Bouti area. First Baptist Church at Paradise, where our friend and brother, uh, Lionel Mason, is the pastor. Amen? So I don't want to make sure you get that, that clear, and I don't want you to get lost on your way. <laughs> Amen. Uh, well, we were blessed this morning, Minister Elton Bra shared with us about giving and responding to God terms of giving and we are so grateful for the message that uh, we are very timely and uh, it's blessed our hearts this morning. Also, uh, Reverend and Sister Alfred Bijar, their grandson passed, uh, 28 years old, uh, Mr. so we want to be in prayer with Reverend and Sister Alfred Bijar. Uh, happy to say that on Thursday night. This past Thursday, choir participated in uh, the Crescent City Praise with emphasis on our faithful God. Uh, choir members uh, were there who want to really thank you and thank you for your response. And uh, 
thank you for the jubilation that we all had. I enjoyed myself. Uh, it was a tremendous time, and we're just grateful for our, our choir members. And uh, we want to uh, also say that uh, yesterday, we had a great time yesterday. Okay. HBCU. Uh, a representative was here from 21 colleges. And uh, we had a tremendous time. That was between 300 and 400 people here on yesterday. Uh, thank, thank God for it. And I want to say, here's the dad. Uh, listen to me, black folks. Uh, we must get involved in those things that are helpful to ourselves and are beneficial. Amen? Amen. We complain about not having, but when we have things that are free, that can help, all too often we don't respond. And you need to respond to that. that you, nobody will make your situation better for you. You can sit down and cry and moan and groan, talk about Trump and everybody else, but you have to exercise the authority, the right, the power, and the privileges that are well within your ability. Nobody owes you nothing. Nobody owes you nothing. If you're going to get it, in many cases, you're going to have to get up off it and get it for yourself. But you don't have to do it for yourself, by yourself, because there are people who are that willing to help. So let us uh, remember that. We, we have to move. Amen. Okay. So, uh, anything else here? No, no that's about it. That's a, that, was, that was a good note to end on. <laughs> we got to do for ourselves. Nobody owe you nothing. Nobody owe me anything. Who am I? Who are you? That folk got to give you something. God has given you what you need. Given your mind. They give you the activity of your limb. And we can go other places and whatever. We can come to those places and, those, and participate in those things that are going to prove to be helpful, not only for ourselves, but for our children and our grandchildren. You look and see what happened to the, 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 the young black race, uh, the young black male. That, that's enough there to keep us on our knees Eight days a week, 25 hours a day. If we want God to move, listen, if we want God to move, we got to move too. God, not just going to sit back and pour it in our lap. I have shown you the way. And I get up off it and make sacrifices. I, I'm going to say this and I'm closing. I get so tired a lot of time here that. Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King did it. Marching up and down the street, Martin Luther King. Like we shall overcome. We shall overcome. Overcome what? We need to overcome our laziness. We need to overcome our nonchalant. We need to under, we need to overcome you know, our unwillingness to make sacrifices and pay some prices for ourselves. That's what we need to overcome. As we stand all over this place. Our theme for the year is Our Old Testament support of scripture is It says Our New Testament support of scripture is It says Also, James 4 and 7 says, This is the day that the Lord has made. And we should rejoice and be glad in it. So glad. Until at this time, we want to warn you. Greet somebody. Amen. <laughs> Me and greet. Third Saturday next month, meet and greet. Reverend Rodney Nicholas 
You're going to devise some things for us, share it with us, and we want every brother to respond. Amen. 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 Calling all brothers, calling all brothers, calling all brothers, calling all black brothers, calling all black brothers. We got to do something. Our young men, our young black men. Okay, our motto for the day is what? Go forward. Go forward. And we want to go forward. I want to uh, go forward in living an obedient life. I want to show you some of the benefit of living an obedient life uh, according to one passage of scripture. And that's come from Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy 7, 8 through 15. Okay, and I just want you to look at the words. And look what God, this is what God's saying, not me. But because the Lord loved you, now he loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your father, God is faithful, he will keep his word. Had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, he brought you out of Egypt, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, God has, God redeemed Israel, liberated them from Egyptian bondage. Christ has come and has liberated us from the bondage of sin. So we are free. Know therefore, he wants you to know this, that the Lord thy God, he is God. Not me, not you. He is God which keep the covenant and mercy, especially with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. God said, you keep my commandment, it's going to have an effect that will reach far down the road. That's the key, folks. The key is not trying to figure out everything and not trying to watch everything and be the key is keeping his commandment. If you keep his commandment, he's going to provide and take care of you. And repay it. He repaid them that hate him to their faith. He repaid the enemies of God to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hated him. He will repay him to his face. In other words, you love me. I'm going to deal with you according to your love and obedience to me. And the other fellow who despise me and reject me, he's going to have to deal with me. A lot of you thought you had to deal with him. No, you don't. God will deal with the folks who, whatever. Next verse. Thou shalt therefore keep me talking to you now. Thou shalt therefore fear those who don't like you. Thou wilt therefore talk about Plot against, resist. He didn't say that. He tell you what you should do, what I should do. He said, Thou shalt therefore keep the commandment. That's your concern, Ferdinand. Keep my commandment and the statutes and the judgment which I command thee this day. If you do what I say do, you lean not to your own understanding. If you acknowledge me in all your ways, I will keep you in perfect peace. I will fight your battle. I will. 12. Wherefore, it shall come to pass. And if God say come to pass, it's going to come to pass. If you hearten to these judgments, if you do what I say do, and keep to do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. I'll feed you when you're hungry. I protect you, and he will love thee. Oh, just to be loved by God. The nature of love is to do good. I will love you, therefore I will do you good. And I'm not going to love you, but I will bless thee. I'm not like y'all, talk love with my mouth. He said, I show love with my action. I will bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, and thy oil, the increase of thy kind. 
and the flock of thy sheep in the land which he swear unto thy father oh, yeah. to give thee. I bless your land. I bless your livestock. I bless you. <laughs> thou shalt be blessed above all people. I'm going to lift you up above the enemy. I'm going to lift you up above those who don't like you. Thou shall not be male or female barren among you. Everybody going to prosper. Money coming to all. Now, money coming to me. Money coming to all. And the Lord will take away from the all sickness. And will put none of the evil disease on Egypt. Who defy my way, where thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. You see, God is saying the bad things are reserved for those who don't like me, but the good things are reserved for those who like me. That's the bottom line. If you keep his, he said, keep his commandments. He didn't say graduate from this school or that school. He said, keep my commandments. He didn't say become a theologian and this and that. He said, keep my commandments. If you want to be blessed, you keep God's commandments. Will you come to the altar this morning and ask him to give you a heart of obedience? Ask him to solidify, solidify your faith in him, that you trust him. You trust him for one thing. You trust him for all. Am I helping somebody here? Huh? Don't let the devil rob you of this blessing today. No, no. You come into the presence of your God. A holy God. A righteous God. A God who blesses his people. A God who keeps his commandment. The blessing attacked to his commandment. You come before God who is able to fight your battle. Am I helping somebody? Somebody ought to answer me here this morning. You coming before a God who can supply all of your needs. Who knows what's going on in your life. A God who says, I'm for you and I'm not against you. A God who will take care of you. A God who can turn your midnight into day. When man says no, you serve a God who will say yes. A God who promised no weapon for him against you can prosper. That's the kind of God you serve. How do I activate all of this on my behalf? He said you activate it by keeping my commandments. Do the right thing. Watch your mouth. Watch your thoughts. Let them be pure thoughts, holy thoughts, right thoughts. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. You say, Rev, it's hard. It's harder not to do the right thing the right thing. Thank you, Father, that you have made your purpose known to us, your plans for us that are good. You have laid them bare before us. You ask us, you ask us to believe you. You ask us to obey you. You don't ask us to manufacture blessings for ourselves. You don't ask us to earn blessings for ourselves. You only ask us to obey and do what you say do. Because inherent in obedience is the power of blessing. And Father, these your people have come to the altar this morning. There are those who are standing in the balcony, other places, dear God. But we come in one accord. We come with one mind and one purpose. And that is to please you. And that is to ask you to give us grace and strength that we might obey. Not sometime, not in easy times, but to obey you all the time, even when there's a price to be paid. Give us obedient hearts. Give us a holy and righteous focus. Help us, dear God, to put aside those things that interfere with your purpose for our lives. Help us, dear God, to rise above the mundane, rise above the pettiness, rise above those things that have no value. Help us, dear God, 
to move out of the valley to the mountain top. Be not praise and our worship. Thank you for this day. Not thank you for these your people. They're catching on one by one, little by little, but they're catching on. And they love what they experience. Continue to move us forward. And we might please you in all things. Thank you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all today. And the Lord keep you. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor, we have another announcement. On Saturday, the 24th, at 7 o'clock a.m., we're asking all men, able men, to show up for cleanup day. But we need you to confirm that you're going to attend by signing up today so we can prepare enough food for everybody. Again, September 24th, at 7 o'clock a.m., cleanup day around the church. We're asking all men to participate. But please sign up today. Yeah. 
in glory. There were ten men who were bound and dying from leprosy. They said, if we could just get to Jesus, we Jesus smoke and heal their infirmities. Oh, now that the lepers were so excited about that miracle, they turned and ran away. And they never took the time to stop and give thanks to the healer. Oh, one of the lepers, he didn't follow the crowd, but he ran back to Jesus and cried out loud. He said, There is no way I could just turn away. I had to come back, I had to come back and say, Thank you, Jesus.
Let us say amen. It's so much to thank the Lord for. A lot of us take it for granted. The things that we do, we do it on our own. But we should thank the Lord. Even when we come, we sit down, we should thank the Lord for it. Thank the Lord for standing up. Because a lot of us are not able to stand up. So I ask everyone today to stand up and <laughs> for our tithes and offerings. Those that can, please do. The Lord will help you to stand up if you want if you only do it in His will. I ask you to repeat after me, please. We give thee but thy own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is down alone. Or trust, O oh Lord, from thee. Let us trust the Lord and pray this morning for each other. O oh, Heavenly Master, as we come to you today, Father, to bring our tithes and offering to you, Father. Ask your Father to bring it, let us bring it, Father, with a smile on our face, Father, knowing that we're only giving you a portion of what you give to us, Father. So help us this day, Father, to do your will and be blessed in your will this day, Father. Ask and all this in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Everyone that can stand, please stand and follow me.
His joke is easy. His joke is easy. together please by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance obey and he went out not knowing with him by faith he so joined in the land of promise 
as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heir with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city we had foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Thank you for your obedience. You may be seated. I want to speak to us this morning from a message entitled, Living by an Eternal Perspective. Living by an eternal perspective. Another way to say this is living by a heavenly perspective. Beginning with Genesis and throughout the whole Bible, man is portrayed among other things as a member of a dying species. The fact is profoundly expressed in Hebrews 9 and 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. God does the appointment. He appoints our arrival here on planet Earth. He appoints our departure here from planet Earth. Once we arrive on planet Earth, and after we reach a certain age of maturity, we decide what or who we're going to live for. What or who we're going to live by. There are only two perspectives from which we can live our lives. A heavenly or an earthly. We can live our lives, first of all, from the standpoint of an earthly perspective. Well, let's look at the characteristics of an earthly perspective. We live for, from, the, from an earthly or a temporal perspective. Those who live their life from an earthly or temporal perspective, they focus on the here and the now rather than the hereafter. It's focused on the here and the now. This world means everything. This world means everything. There's no provision made for the hereafter. I, I got to get all of the gusto right here. I have to uh, be a part of all of the exciting fun that is taking place here and now. I can't miss out on uh, the excitement of the, uh, the pleasure indulgence of the world, focused on the here and now. In all things, it seeks self-satisfaction. In all things and above all things, those who live from an earthly or temporal perspective, they seek self-satisfaction. It's all about self. What I can get, what I can do, how much money I can make, and on and on. It's all about self to live from a temporal or an earthly perspective. It is to emphasize material accumulation. It's, it defines life by what it has. Am I coming through to you? Those who live from an earthly perspective, temporal perspective, they define life by what they have. Worth and value is not determined by what you have. It is determined by what or who have you. Life is not about what you have in your head. It's about what you have in your heart. Life is determined by the principles you live by. Humility. Honesty, selflessness, that is, self-giving, advancing others. You get up by helping others to get up. It does not think in terms of what I can do for me, but what I can do for others. That's what life is all about. Life is all about that. To let those who live by an earthly or temporal pers perspective, they seek to dominate or subdue other people. They seek to dominate or subdue other folks. 
It's an effort to generate praise and acceptance for oneself by reducing others to a lower level of importance. Yeah. Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah. Yeah. It seeks to advance itself, elevate itself. It seeks prominence by tearing down other folks. I have to be the only one standing. All the praise have to come to me. All, all eyes have to be on me. I have to be the smartest one in the bunch. And everybody come to me for advice. Everybody look to me to have the final say so. Matter of fact, I'm very close. I'm not, but I'm very close to being the second coming. And they incorporate the words of Jesus and apply them to themselves. When Jesus said to Philip, he that have seen me have seen the Father, they say he that have seen me have seen Jesus. Listen, your worth and your value is not determined. You got to get this. Your worth and your value is not determined by how many people you can control. But it is determined by your ability to control yourself. May I say it again? Worth and value is not determined by how many people you control. Worth and value is determined by your ability to control yourself. Do you have control over your emotion? Do you have control over your anger? Do you have control over your passion? When, when you're done wrong, can you refrain from retaliating? If you can do that, you're in good self-control. Y'all got that? Yes. Can, can, can you refrain from spreading that piece of juicy gossip? Not just plain gossip, but juicy gossip. You don't check it out. You just, it's just, it's just you. I got to say it. I told the Bible class on Wednesday night. As many look at it, uh, two ways, uh, two ways to look at a secret. First of all, it's not worth telling. And the second way to look at it is it's too good to keep. Do you have control over your tongue? The words. That you are self-control. William Barclay, the English theologian, said, it's funny how we condemn in others things that we allow in ourselves. And so let me assure you that I am not, before you mistake me, let me assure you that I'm not saying that any person who seeks to better themselves and their family through education, job, profitable investment is wrong. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that any person who fails to realize that there are needs of the soul that cannot be met by material things, any person who fails to recognize that the uh, uh, colleges and universities and higher institutions of learning can teach us how to make a living, but they can't teach us how to live. There are some needs that the soul has that cannot be met by things. It's not in the nature of things to bring perpetual joy and happiness to a human life. Things have their limitation. It can do so much. But when my burdens get heavy, yeah. I don't go to my wardrobe and say, oh, Sue, tell me what must I do. I don't go to my car and sit in my car and say, help me with this burden I, that is so heavy and too heavy to bear. There are some needs that we have that can only be met by God. And is 
our spiritual principle in life. Am I helping somebody? Money and prestige and power as well as positions have their limitations. Have their limitations. And be careful about wanting to get to the top. When you get to the top, that's where everybody else is shooting at you. There's nothing wrong with being at the top. And you can enjoy being at the top, but make sure God put you at the top. And you didn't put yourself, a man or your clique, your clique put you at the top. And so then, if God put you somewhere, he has a way of keeping you there. And if God put you somewhere, no matter how hard the, 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 and trials may come, but if God put you there, He'll give you a grace to deal with whatever comes your way. You'll see the lightning flash and you'll hear thunder roll, but that doesn't bother you because the Lord is your keeper. And you hear him saying to you, just like he said to Joshua, be thou courageous. Fear not, for lo, I am with you. Everybody got the assurance today that God is with you. God is with you in that decision you made. God is with you in that step that you took. God is with you. And if God be for you, doesn't matter who is against you. You see, if God be for you, when they'll knock you down on this side, God will pick you up on the other side. If God be for you, they'll close one door and God will open up two, three other doors. If God be for you, he'll make all things work for your good. If God be for you, you can run through truth and leap over wall. If God be for you, you may get knocked down, but you're going to get up. And you'll get up stronger than what you were before you were knocked down. That is God be for you. If God be for you, I'm we'll throw you in a fiery furnace, but if God be for you, he'll be there as the forward man. If God be there, Am I helping somebody? You might be in a lion's den of trouble, a lion's den of hurt and pain. But if God be there, he'll bring you through and bring you out. God's ways are not like our ways. We think God to be smooth. Everything got to go good. Everything got to fall in place. But not so with God. There are some lessons that God want to teach us that can only be learned as we go through difficulties, trial, persecution, and tribulation. Hardship. Because God knows we need to. When God led Israel out of Egypt, en route to the promised land, you need to understand that the shortest distance from Egypt to the promised land was around the Red Sea. But God would not bring them the shortest distance. God would bring them through the longest distance. Through the Red Sea. Because there were lessons in the Red Sea. It was a lesson from that experience that they could only learn by going not around, but through. Look at the wisdom of God. Why not bring them around the race? See, look at the wisdom of God. First of all, they had been in Egypt for 400 years. All they knew was taking orders from the slave master. But now they got one man more. They got to learn how to take orders from their own. It's going to buy them some time. But not only that, if they would have gone around the Red Sea, they had to deal with the Jebusites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Amalekites, and all like brothers. <laughs> Am I helping somebody? They would have been slaughtered. So they, they weren't skilled for in military warfare. So God bought some time to teach them how to trust in him, how to follow leadership, and to prepare them for their eventual fight with all the others. Yeah. Am I helping somebody? Listen, to live simply by an earthly or temporal perspective is to destine oneself to failure, emptiness, and disappointment. If you live from an earthly perspective, eventually, you're going to be disappointed. 
And you're going to be empty in life. You don't hear what I'm saying. Unfulfilled life is the result of excluding God out of the equation. Yes. But the good news is that we can avoid a wasted life if we have a live by the other perspective. That's a heavenly or an eternal perspective. Let us look. I got y'all now that's right. Y'all can't go nowhere. I got you. Okay. Right. I wouldn't dare let you out here early to go on that dangerous highway. But, but, but let's look at the characteristic of a heavenly perspective. To live from a heavenly perspective. Listen, listen. The world, first of all, is the proponent of the earthly perspective. And the church is the proponent of the heavenly perspective. Listen, listen, listen. What qualifies the church to propagate the heavenly perspective? What gives us the right to say this is the best perspective to live by? First of all, you want to know that the church is a divine initiative. It's a divine, God is the one. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build. The church is not the brainchild of a philosopher or whoever. The church is the result of Christ, God, Holy Spirit, saying upon the earth, that will be a church. Not only is the church a the result of a divine initiative, the church is the result of a divine investment. See, God, God, God created the church and then God invested himself in the church. And that's why the church laughs. That's why the church have wealth of the stone. That's why the church have come through Spanish Inquisition and come through murder and, and come through a uh, 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 false teaching and false prophet even today in India, Syria, and other places while brothers and sisters are dying for the cause of Christ. The church will prevail because the church is of a divine investment. God is in the church. Church takes its orders from him and then the reason why the church is capable and qualified to speak of this eternal perspective is because the church is about a divine involvement. God is in his church, controlling his church, purifying his church, delivering his church, protecting his church, sending uh, born again uh, believers uh, generation after generation. God is Protecting the church. If you ever get so high that they wonder what the church is going to do if you quit. The first thing you need to do is ask yourself what was the church doing before you got here. That would settle the whole issue. Yeah. And so then, I'm coming to a close. I, I'm going to finish this next week. Because there was some things I came across. I said, oh... I can't preach this sermon without including that. But a few more things I want to say. The church is not about good people helping God. It's about bad people being loved and forgiven by God. Can I get an amen? The church is not about good folks helping God. It's about bad people being loved and forgiven, crowned and anointed. By Almighty God, yes, Almighty God, who said, in yourself, you can't do it. But you can do all things yes, yes, yes. through me, yes. because I will strengthen you, yes. strengthen you to preach, then threaten you to teach, yes. threaten you to witness, yes. threaten you to testify, yes. threaten you to play, threaten you to sing. Yes. I will yes. move in your heart. Move in your mind. Move in your life. And even when your hamatia messed them up, I will overrule uh, the eternal damage that, that your 
your wrong will do. And I will practice our damage control. Limit the amount of da damage that even your wrong. Because I'm in control. I'm so glad about that. How about y'all? I'm glad. Somebody said, look beyond my fault. He didn't look beyond my fault. He looked on my fault. And he said he needs a savior. He looked on my fault. And said he needs some help living this life. He looked on my fault. And said that he needs a divine companion. Ah, the church is about God loving, forgiving, and redeeming. About God making us co-laborers with Christ for the salvation of a world that is estranged from God. What goes on in the church, and y'all got to listen to this, what goes on in the church is not designed, is not aimed at satisfying your fleshly desire. What goes on in the church is not aimed at tickling your ears and making you feel good. What goes on in the church, yeah, is 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 it's not about satisfying your ego. The aim is to lift you into the presence of God, to shake you loose from a worldly perspective of life, from your fleshly attachment. What goes on in the church is to rid us of our earthly clinging to you that we may acquire an eternal perspective. So when we live by an eternal perspective, we live by faith. Verse number eight, we live by faith. Look, look at verse number eight says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. He obeyed. When you live for a heavenly perspective, you live by faith, which implies obedience. If you believe God, you know why folks don't pay their tithe? Because they don't really believe God. Do you know why they don't turn the other cheek? Because they don't believe God. Do you know why they don't walk circumspectly in the world? Because they don't believe God. See, if you believe God, you believe that God will supply all of your... Well, if I pay my tithe, this is how much I'm going to have left. Whatever you got left belongs to God anyway, because the gold and the silver belong to him. The cows on the thousand hills belong to him. The world and they that dwell to him belong to God. Everything that you have belongs to God. So you're not only responsible for the 10%, you're also responsible for how you use the 90%. And the Bible said, whatever you do, you ought to do it to the glory of God. He said, not knowing where he was going, that's faith. We just got to learn how to take God at his word. Faith says he will never leave me. Faith says he's always by my side. Faith says, even though I don't see it, yet he is working it all out for my good. Faith says, it might not look good now, but in the end, it's going to serve the purpose of glorifying God and making my life better. That's what faith says. Faith says that if I can't go forward with him, I'm not going back. I'm going to hold on because I know that he may not come when I want him to come, but whenever he comes, he always going to be on time. Faith says that tomorrow will be better than today. That's what faith says. Faith says, though the storm keep on raging in my life, I got an anchor. And it's steadfast. It's, it's, it's unmovable. It, 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 it's sure. Uh, it cannot fail. It keep me. Though the storm rage from side to side, faith says he is in control. Faith says, even though he did not come in the first watch of the night, he did not come in the second watch of the night, neither did he come in the third watch of the night, but faith continues to hold on because they know in the fourth watch of the night, he's going to come. And then he's going to come walking on top of that which was causing me trouble. Yeah. 
And faith tell me I can step out of the boat. And I can walk on the water. But even if my faith give up weight and I start sinking, I can cry out, Lord, save me. Down some of y'all, we've been sinking. Like Peter, y'all a bit now, Lord, remember you the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You the God who scooped out the sea with the palm of your, now you're in the bottom of the ocean. With the palm of your hand, you held the water that they were in the skirt that you're gone at. Peter didn't have time for all that. Peter said, Lord, save me. You have one long prayer all the time. Just tell him, Lord, save me. Lord, help me. Lord, keep me. It might happen tonight. Here it is. And so then, verse number nine, like this. By faith, Abraham so joined in the land of promise as in a strange country. Dwelling in tabernacle with Isaac. Uh, uh, let me say this, and uh, maybe open it up on next week, but write this. By faith, he so joined in the land of promise. Now, this was the land God promised him. But he treated the land that God promised him as a strange country. And he was dwelling, he dwelt in tabernacles, which means tent, because he realized that. Any day, he might have been called upon to fold a tent, pull a tent, and move on somewhere else. This world is not your home. Interesting thing about this is too is that, we read another scripture, and that's the scripture I'll probably give you next week, is that even though God promised Abraham the land, God never gave it to him. And you got to understand that something that God put on your heart and something that you feel in your heart and know that belongs, that God has promised you, you may not be the one to get it. Your children, your children's children. Okay, okay so, so, so. And verse number 10, look what he said. For he looked for a city. Now, two things here. He's looking for a city represent dissatisfaction. For if he looked for a city, evidently he wasn't satisfied with the one he was in. And then it represents hope. He looked for a city. He believed. Now, I'm in the promised land where God promised me, but yet he is not tied into that. He says, I'm looking for a city. So he moved now beyond the physical. He moved beyond the geographical location and said that there got to be a city whose builder and maker is God. Abraham was rich, but he wasn't completely satisfied with his present city. Like Abraham, a Christian cannot be satisfied with this present city, with all this crime, all this war, all this hatred, all this ugliness, all this murder. Can't be satisfied with this. But there is a city. Be glad our God, whose builder and maker. Y'all know about that city? The wicked there cease from no that wicked there cease from trouble. No wicked be at rest because they're not there. But those of us who live by a spiritual, heavenly perspective, am I helping somebody on this side? My tendency is to lean this way, but I got to balance this leaning so I lean this way, then I can lean that way, huh? Because what, what, what God has for them over there, he has for you. And what God has for the old saints, he got for the young saints. What God has for those who understood at the deepest level, those of us who only can phantom on a minor prayer, God has for us too. Was that all right? That's all right. Stay by. They're by eternal perspective. May God first in your life. You make God first in your life. You see, if you take care of God's business, God's going to take care of your business. Never fail. There may be one today. You heard the message. 
you've been putting off, maybe today is your day. Maybe you should say in your heart, I'm not, I'm not putting off anymore. I'm not, I'm not going to procrastinate any longer. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I will give my life to him. I don't understand everything that Reverend was saying. But I'm going to begin my walk today. I do believe that I understood him to say, if I believe him, follow him day by day, I'll become stronger in my faith. If you're present today, and God has spoken to you, you can come by letter, by Christian experience as a candidate for baptism you can come and say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ to his Lordship and know the wonderful plan the purpose that he has for your life right now why why I plead with you why heaven wait on you why the church pray for you can come and say yes. Yes, Lord. I believe Jesus died for my sin. Yes. I want to begin my walk with you. Glory, hallelujah. God bless you today. You may be seen. Glory, glory. Bless you so good. We thank the Lord for you. you. Love you so very kindly. Thank God for your faith, for your steadfastness, for your consistency. Thank God for your desire to please Him in your walk and in your talk. We are all in this together. Thank God for one another. Pray for one another. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. But the scripture says, first of all, submit yourself to the Lord. Because you can only resist him in, your, in God's strength, not in your own strength. Resist temptation. To do that which is wrong. To say that which is wrong that God might be pleased with your life and, and, and whatever and whoever God is pleased with, he bestowed his blessing to you. Don't you want God to bless you? And if you do, walk faithfully, obediently before him. God bless you. And I'll uh, keep you so grateful, Pastor Wallace, is present with us today. Thank you for God. And all the gentlemen who are responsible for our, our, our right, responsible for um, making it possible by way of visual uh, power to, to have King David pass a while. While it's on uh, channel 20 in our area. Uh, WH something. But uh, 20, you remember too old? You, you can get it. That's in our area. Times of class area might be a little different. But I'll put it on your guide. You'll find it. Amen. So then we thank God for what we are doing for this area and uh, extended area. Thank God. Let us pray for one another. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you again. And uh, be careful uh, on the on the highway. Uh, be careful. Be careful. The grace of God is sufficient to get you home safely. Trust Him. Trust Him. He'll do it. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Uh, on next Sunday, we're going to leave from here and go to Dr. Moore, see her and uh, her church family for her uh, 
anniversary, past anniversary, we look forward to having a great time with them. So God, God bless you for that as well. As we stand all over this place, and uh, amen. Join our hands together. Thank you, Father, for communicating your presence and your word to our hearts today. We thank you for the worship experience that we've had with you, the fellowship we had with one another. Now we move away from this building. We're always in your presence. It was grace to represent you, to honor your name in all that we do, all that we say, and all that we think. Thank you for each and every one of you. Bless them and their family. Pray for Pastor Kevin B. John and his wife and their family. Give them comfort, give them strength, as only God can do. So we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you again. And the Lord keep you. Huh? Oh.